As you probably already know by now, OpenAI made an announcement during Dev Day last week about GPTs. This is a very cool new feature that enables you to, without writing any code, create your own version of ChatGPT that has unique set of skills and unique access to a knowledge base that you can give it by uploading files. And today, we're going to be walking through how to create a, your own GPT step by step. And we'll be creating the most basic version to start with, where it's retrieving information from a file that you upload. In part two of the video, we will be going through some of the more advanced functionality where we connect our chatbot with an API that we wrote ourselves, complete that authentication process such that the chatbot can go and retrieve information from our own database. Just a heads up that you won't have access to it unless you are a ChatGPT Plus or Enterprise subscriber. So here we go. The first thing you do is to go to chat.openai.com and you will see on the left hand side here a button called explore. So click into that. If you haven't created any GPTs before, this section will be empty for you. You will see create a GPT at the top. So it's still in beta mode and I have to say there are places where it's still pretty buggy, but I guess that's what you have to um, deal with if you're at the frontier. And here you will see a collection made by ChatGPT of examples of these GPTs that have very specific uh, use cases. So you can play around with these just to get a sense of what you can do. But once you're ready to start your own, click on this, create a GPT. You will see two sides to the page. The left side enables you to design and configure your GPT. The right side enables you to test it. And on the left side, you have two choices. One is to create it using their GPT builder. The second option is to configure it yourself by filling out a form. With the GPT Builder, you basically just chat to it. It will wa walk you through some questions, ask you what you want your um, GPT to do, ask you to name it, create some images for you for the profile. And I actually find the process a little bit slow when you go through the GPT Builder, so I'd rather just go to configure. I filled out this form to tell you um, what I did. So first you can either upload a photo or just use their image generator to generate your own image and give it a name. So give it a description, a chatbot that provides parenting advice based on the book, one, two, three magic. And then the instructions for the chatbot is that it should answer parenting questions by referencing the knowledge in the book, one, two, three magic. This book has been provided to you as an uploaded file. If the user asks any questions that are outside the scope of this book, please answer by saying that you don't know. Do not use your own knowledge or fetch answers from the web. And then these are like pre-populated buttons that can help users understand how to some use cases for your chatbot. And then you can upload any files that you would uh, like to provide your chatbot with here. You can upload up to 20 different files. I think it's a 512 megabytes per file. And then you can select whether you want your chatbot to have some additional capabilities like web browsing or generating images or code interpreter. And in this case, I don't need any of them. And actions are essentially ability for your chatbot to do something other than just generating text. And in the next video, we will walk through this part in a lot more detail. So after you've made your changes, make sure that you do an update. And you have three choices. You can publish your chatbot only to yourself, only to people with a link, or expose to the public. And if you choose public, it will be available on the GPT store, which will be, I guess, really soon. I'm going to publish to only me. And just be really careful here in that 
this has been known to be a little bit buggy, so not saving changes that you've made. So you're going to click on View GPT, and we're going to test it out. And if you look at the book, you'll see that there's a section on tactics to get children to pick up around the house. So there's the kitchen timer and docking system. There's the garbage bag method. The 55 gallon drum. All right, let's see if it comes back with that. So it's referencing the one, two, three magic approach, setting a daily cutoff time. So if any belongings found lying around would be confiscated. Avoid nagging and lecturing. Use kitchen timers. Rewards and punishments. Oh, here, I reference the garbage bag method. Great. So let's ask it something that it shouldn't know and see if it tries to give me an answer. What is the diff and positional defiance disorder? So I'm hoping that it's going to tell me it can't answer that question. Perfect. Now let's try something. If you want to edit your GPT, just um, press the down menu here, click on edit GPT. And what I'm going to do is to give it web browsing capabilities. And then I'm going to say, remove the sentence. Update. So what I'm hoping that it will do, ask the same question, what is the difference between, then now you can see the difference between um, having that web browsing switched on versus switched off. Now, because I've deleted that sentence, asking it to not use anything else other than my uploaded PDF, and I've also given it web surfing capabilities, is now able to retrieve information that's outside the scope of the book. Great. So that's how you do it. Now look out for the next video where we're going to use um, GPTs and take it to the next level by giving it some actions.